Hi, I'm Mike Hoglin and I'm an instructor here at Point Blank. In my career I've worked with labels like Injuni Beats, Armada and Vendit. And my music's been supported by DJs like Armin Van Buren, Above and Beyond and Ferry Corsten, among others. Hope you're going to enjoy the content of the following videos, which give you a bit of an insight of the type of content that you can expect on the new Trans and EDM course at Point Blank. See you in class. I doubled up the close hi-hat in our beat with that open hi-hat. I actually like layering a few hi-hats, so this, this other one here, kind of a bit like a shaker, place that on top too, a nice white sound. So we just hold down shift and highlight and then right click or control click and insert warp markers. This has got its own groove with inside the loop, but we're going to apply our notator 16 swing to this and all these hits are then going to be controlled by this swing and this will help it sit along with our basic beat, which has the Notator 16 swing on it. Just getting things to sit and gel a lot better. But like this, you can really create a big snare sound that nobody else has by layering two or three different snares or claps and then routing them to a bus and processing them there. And then as always, this technique can be used not only in dubstep, but in any genre, maybe trance or house, who knows, maybe the infamous Prida snare was made this way. And we're gonna make it a bit subbier here with the filter. That's probably good. And we're also gonna take the low frequencies out of it since we don't want it to interfere with our kick drum uh, and the sub uh, baseline frequencies. And it sounds like this now. But we can also utilize that 16th bassline from the ES1 again. I've changed the notes around a little bit again. Sounds like this now. And I think like this they go together well with the sidechain bass sound. We can actually also apply that sidechain compression to the ES1. And just copy it over here in the mixer. And then that's that 16th bassline also being ducked against the kick drum now. Just the settings a little bit. I think the uh, the reverse effect is slightly loud, so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit, but we can adjust this a bit later. That sounds fine. So let's hear it in the mix. Yeah, I think that's sounding great. So with a pre-delay sitting like this, We've got around a hundred milliseconds before the actual reverb kicks in. I like using a bit of pre-delay because uh, it will keep your riff kind of forward in the mix, but you also get to hear the reverb kind of at the same time. So let's play the riff again. Make it a bit shorter. And adjust the wet balance. That's how you can create a nice big riff sound like this by layering two or three different sounds, grouping them using track stacks and then treating them with EQ, compressor and reverb. And you can probably come up with a fairly decent trance riff if you always play thirds like this. So two white keys with one white key gap in the middle. And in fact, there are quite a number of big trance tracks that are based on this principle. For example, if I play this, you will recognize this, Madagascar. Would sound even bigger if you add the lower octave to it with your left hand, just on the lower note. Let's open the filter as well. Before we record a couple of ad-libs, I think it would be nice if you sing the uh, chorus 
uh, kind of a little bit softer, more breathy, kind of softer tone, I think could, could be a nice alternative. Okay, yeah. so same point, yeah? Yes, please, that's brilliant. <laughs> Seems so bright, casting out rays of light, leaving the winter far behind. But yesterday, nothing grew, slow inside is new. So we're just going to click on here and go down to Complex Pro and this is very good because it's got uh, this formant control here and this is perfect for when we're uh, transposing the vocal up or down. It will retain the tonal quality uh, of the sample. So if we play it now, you can listen to the difference. That's great. So it's going to activate a stereo delay. So for the solo of the track, you can hear. I'm just going to take off the low end here with the low cut. Bring down the high cut. Just take down some of the output mix. I'm going to apply the same trick as we mentioned in the last video, just adjusting the delay slightly off perfection. Helping to give a bit more organic sound losing that digital perfection. Couple more adjustments here on the reverb. So the reverb isn't quite as harsh. And roll off the lower frequencies here too. Give a bit more reverb here to this section. Bring it in with the high cut. And it sounds pretty uh, smooth and nice with our lifter. And you can add this uh, same drum roll to your kick drum, for example, if you want to make it even stronger. And uh, that way, get even a bit more energy. 